I've got pretty good rainwater leak up here. And the Katie Krogan across from me, the stern is lifted out of the water. Welcome to the Aquaculture Channel. Featuring my 1989 44-foot DeFever offshore cruiser. And myself, Ashley Ringlespa, aka Captain Butch. Join me as we perform some boat maintenance and repairs and enjoy the benefits that come with this amazing lifestyle. I have been living aboard for the last 12 years and I look forward to sharing with you what I have learned and the experiences that happen along the way. This is the Aquacultured Life. Okay, it is um, Wednesday morning. Hurricane Ian is uh, starting to come ashore south of us, but we are getting um, quite a bit of wind and rain up in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, the tide is going way down. The uh, northeast wind is very persistent right now and is pushing the water out of Tampa Bay. And if you can see out my window, um, see that post there in the dock, we are way down. There's uh, uh, a lot of boats that are going to be pushing the limits on their lines. I'm hoping that mine are long enough. You can see out the bow, there's my bow line coming down on the starboard side. Port side still has quite a bit of slack. I think we've got another two hours until we reach peak low tide. And then I've got pretty good rainwater leak up here um, coming through from my flybridge and it's created a nice puddle here. I know that when I get really heavy rains without my bimini's up there, the water comes in from somewhere I don't know where. Um, so that is going to not be great because it's going to be raining even harder. The wind is going to pick up even more. The wind's gusting right now, probably up to 50 miles per hour. Sustained probably around 35. Um, so it's starting to get serious around here. The mirror's here with me. I like <laughs> haven't seen her in a while, huh? So she's giving me a hand out here while it's getting really nasty. So having a great time. We've got the generator running. Uh, they shut the power off to the marina yesterday, uh, late afternoon, uh, because when they're anticipating a major storm or sea level rise, they protect their power grid by shutting the power down preemptively. So running the generator. Got cable, uh, watching the news, uh, because the internet's still on. Got the air conditioning going, holding up pretty good so far. Almost to peak low tide, which is a good thing. Let's see out the bow. This is probably the line that I'm most concerned with. You can see how pretty tight it is. It's still got some decent slack, so it's not too bad. And I don't know if you can see that Katie Krogan across the way, their stern tied to their piling, so their lines are super tight right now. They're almost starting to lift their stern out of the water a little bit. So I'm hoping they uh, don't break any lines or cleats or anything like that. Um, because that water dropped in a serious way with that northeast wind blowing. Uh, we're averaging somewhere between 30 and 40 knots sustained with gusts up to 60, 60 knots. Uh, so it's no picnic out here, lots of rain. Lots of boats rocking and rolling, lots of uh, tight lines, and uh, it looks like everybody's holding up pretty well so far. And the mirror looks very excited. <laughs> catching water over here. Don't know where that water is coming from and it sucks because this wood up here is going to get discolored. I, one day I'll probably find that leak. Hopefully. I, <laughs> it's always mind-boggling uh, but my tape job on all the doors and windows and hatches seem to be working pretty well. I don't have any other leaks so that is a really good thing. But uh, the worst of the weather is still yet to come uh, this afternoon. I think they're saying between noon and midnight is going to be the worst conditions here. Uh, but man, I'm, I'm really sorry about the, the folks down south that are taking the brunt of this Category 5 storm now. Uh, they're getting like 12 to 15 foot of storm surge in the uh, Port Charlotte, Fort Myers area. So I, I, 
I can't imagine dealing with that. I'm, we're so lucky up here that we dodged another bullet and this thing, this thing did not hit us straight on because uh, that would not be a good day at all. I mean, we're, we're way away from there and we've got serious weather here. I can't imagine what it's like down there, so I'm, I'm thinking about everybody down there. So Hurricane Ian followed a similar path as Hurricane Charlie back in 2004, which was good for us up in the Tampa Bay area, but horrible for the folks down in the Fort Myers and Port Charlotte region. And since we were on the north side of the storm, we experienced a reverse storm surge due to the heaviest winds coming out of the northeast direction and blowing the water out of Tampa Bay. Conversely, there was catastrophic storm surge flooding down in the landfall area south due to the heavy onshore winds. So up here, as the day wore on, the tide just kept getting lower and lower and lower. Boats were sitting hard on the bottom, cleats were getting ripped out of decks, lines were getting pushed to their limits. During this week, we happened to be getting our normal astronomical spring tides, meaning the highest high tides and the lowest low tides. So this exacerbates the storm surge effects from the storm. In this graph, you can see the predicted tide level for our area versus the observed from the reverse storm surge. However, even though when we hit peak low tide and I thought the water level was going to stabilize, it just kept getting lower even when the predicted tide levels were supposed to be going up. I had to adjust lines a couple times throughout the day. This is a delicate balance because I do not have a lot of room in my slip, so if the lines are too loose, I could slam against pilings, docks, or neighbors, and if too tight, my cleats could get damaged, ripped out, and lines and even pilings can break. So throughout the day, my boat dropped about five or six feet below normal. Okay, the wind has been blowing out of the north now for a long time, for about 50 to 70 knots. The tide has dropped even further. I mean, look at that. Look at the piling, how high it is, the lines coming down. They were taut. I had to uh, loosen those lines. I'm glad I did. They're getting really close to uh, being a bad news situation. And the Katie Krogan across from me, the stern is lifted out of the water because the lines are tight. That, I mean, those lines and the cleats, that is amazing. But it's still holding that boat. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, it's quite the scene around here. Uh, we've got another probably five hours until it starts to calm off a little bit. So hopefully we get there soon. After about 18 hours of eventful weather, things started to calm down and fortunately all of my neighbors in my boat fared just fine. The only issue I had was the rainwater leak in the main salon, but all is well. Unfortunately, while we were spared in the Tampa Bay area, our neighbors to the south took a devastating blow. Bridges, homes, businesses, and boats were destroyed, lives were lost, and many were left traumatized by the unrelenting wrath of Hurricane Ian. Dodging a bullet is an understatement. Tampa Bay has not been hit by a major hurricane in over 100 years, so everyone was convinced this was our storm. This goes to show you how difficult it can be to make a plan when a hurricane is headed in your direction. Do you stay? Do you move? Do you get hauled out? Ride it out on anchor or at sea? The folks in Southwest Florida were essentially caught by surprise as they had nearly 24 hours to react to the change in direction of Ian. So they went from everything was A-OK -okay one day to being devastated within 48 hours. So you can imagine the days leading up to a major hurricane landfall are extremely stressful. Um, you have to make a decision on what you're gonna do. And with so much forecast track uncertainty, that decision is that much harder to make. And unfortunately, whatever decision you make can yield grave consequences. And in my case, my viable option with my boat was to head south because the initial forecasted track and the most confident track was heading it to the Tampa Bay area. And since we haven't been hit in 100 years, they're like, this is it. This is going to be the one. So I could have headed down south to Fort Myers and headed across the state uh, to the east coast to get out of Dodge uh, but of course that takes several days and it takes you know a day and a half two days for me to just get down to Fort Myers and outside of two days on the forecast track they have very little certainty so by the time they know it's making a turn and it's headed to a you know small enough general area 
it's usually too late on what you're going to do, especially with a boat like this because it's so slow. You can't run from it at that point, so you just have to hunker down and hope for the best. Um, and unfortunately, a fellow DeFever owner uh, fell victim of that situation where they were in the Inglewood area. Uh, they headed south because they thought the storm was coming up here and they made it down to Captiva, anchored up, and by the time they saw the storm heading in that direction, it's really too late. These storms are huge. By the time they're, you know, day out, you're sent, you're starting to get tropical storm force winds. Uh, so the weather deteriorates pretty quick. So it's usually too late to do anything. So he anchored up behind Captiva, which was like ground zero for where the storm went. Um, he had mechanical issues. His generator was not working, his batteries were going down, his cell phone battery was dying, he was by himself, his wife is, uh, you know, hasn't heard from him since 9 a.m., the day of landfall, so you can imagine how stressful that must have been for both of them. And then he ended up getting saved by the Coast Guard at like 2 a.m. And the boat was a loss. Fortunately, he survived and uh, can tell the story. And hopefully, I'll be able to talk to him and, and bring him on the channel at some point to uh, bring his story uh, to you. Uh, but that haunts me. I mean, that could have been me. That could have very well have been me. Uh, because if I would have headed down to Fort Myers with the intent to go across the state, say I made it down there and I had a mechanical issue and I was stuck. And then all of a sudden the storm heads my direction and I'm now ground zero. Uh, so that is definitely, um, you know, a huge part of my decision making process of what could potentially go wrong with these storms when they do whatever the hell they want to do. Luckily and fortunately, I made the decision to stay here in my home port, which, you know, to many, it would have seemed ridiculous because the storm is headed right here and we're very vulnerable to these major hurricanes, especially for the storm surge situation. And if that storm would have made it here and would have gone just north of us, it would have been worst case scenario and pretty much, you know, all these boats would not survive it here in this marina. They would be broken off out into the other side of Tampa Bay, sunk, damaged lost whatever um, so luckily I stayed put and it was the best case outcome for the Tampa Bay area and you know I don't know how many times we're gonna dodge these storms and you know people say it's the Indian burial grounds here in the Tampa Bay area and um, you know other reasons but you know at some point our, our number is up I'm sure and it's gonna happen but uh, you know I'm gonna thank my lucky stars uh, that um, it didn't happen this time and uh, made it through another day to be here with you and keep floating and uh, never take that for granted. Uh, these hurricane seasons are, are uh, no picnic to make it through. They go from June 30th through November 30th, or I'm sorry, June 1st to November 30th. So that's a long time. We still have until November 30th until we're totally out of the woods. So you know, something could pop up at any time, but uh, I'm gonna be thankful for every day that passes that we don't have another storm. And of course, I feel so guilty that the storm hooked into the state south of us. Um, you know, of course, the best case scenario would be the storm goes way off and doesn't affect anybody. But unfortunately, a lot of the time it's got to affect somebody. And that somebody was the Fort Myers, Port Charlotte um, region, uh, Sanibel. Um, so sorry that, that that impacted you guys down there and, and you know left a path of destruction and devastation down there. Um, you know that could have easily been us up here and uh, if you do want to um, to contribute to the relief efforts down um, in the the southwestern part of Florida that were affected by Hurricane Ian I will list a couple of links below of uh, ways that you can you can contribute either with uh, materials or uh, labor or funds so check out the links down below and um, you know, I wish everybody the best down there. My thoughts are with you, and um, you'll get through it and come out stronger than, than ever before. So, a special thanks to all of you um, and everybody that checked in on me to make sure that I was okay. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm so happy that I, I'm still here to be able to keep vlogging for you, keep posting videos, and, and uh, be here for you. So, uh, of course, throw me a like, subscribe, hit that bell and uh, follow me on Instagram, aqua underscore cultured. And I'll see you next time. 